Bienvenido a Espacio a Tierra, soy Ana Cristina Olvera y hoy te doy la bienvenida al Centro de Control de Misión Christopher C. Kraft en el Centro Espacial Johnson de la NASA. En solo unas semanas será desde esta misma sala que los controladores de vuelo supervisarán la misión Artemis One, el primero de una serie de vuelos que conducirán al regreso de los humanos a la superficie de la Luna. And lift off. Durante más de 20 años, la Estación Espacial Internacional ha servido como una plataforma de órbita baja terrestre para la exploración espacial humana, la investigación científica y la innovación tecnológica. Ahora, el laboratorio en órbita está liderando el camino para la próxima generación de estaciones espaciales y caminantes lunares. La NASA apunta hacia el regreso a la Luna a través de Artemis, donde exploraremos más de la superficie lunar que nunca. Sobre la base de un historial de operaciones de una estación espacial en órbita baja terrestre y con la colaboración de socios comerciales e internacionales, Artemis establecerá la primera presencia de largo plazo en la Luna y sus alrededores. Un componente vital de Artemis es una nueva estación espacial de última generación llamada Gateway. Gateway servirá como un puesto de avanzada para los astronautas mientras viajan entre la órbita lunar y la superficie lunar. Gateway también permitirá el soporte remoto del campamento base de Artemis. A medida que nuestros futuros robots y astronautas exploren más y realicen más ciencia que nunca, Gateway permanecerá en órbita durante más de una década, proporcionando un lugar para vivir y trabajar y apoyando a la ciencia y a la exploración humana a largo plazo en la Luna y sus alrededores. Para obtener más información sobre la Estación Espacial Gateway y cómo ha crecido a partir de las lecciones aprendidas con la Estación Espacial Internacional, veamos esta interesante charla entre Kyla LaFrance y Sean Fuller, gerente de Socios Internacionales del programa Gateway, en el Centro Espacial Johnson de la NASA. So, one of the things about Gateway is that it's building on the International Space Station. What kind of lessons learned are you taking from the ISS for Gateway today? Yeah, that's great. We've got a lot of folks working in the Gateway program, like myself, that have a history in ISS. Also have uh, our crews. So it's great that the crews that have spent time living on ISS that can translate that into, a, into Gateway for us to think about it. So lessons learned we have in there, when we really think about the layout inside of Gateway, it goes into the small things, the computers that the crew uses. How can we condense that down uh, to the numbers of laptops and interfaces on Gateway? We see a lot of equipment externally Uh, on ISS. That would be a harsher radiation environment for us in Gateway. Different design concepts, a lot of ours is internal in equipment. Computers, for example, are all internal. We bring a lot of that stuff inside. And so we take those lessons learned. Probably one of the biggest areas we apply to it though, because it's crew tended, is think about reliability and maintainability because the crew's not there. We've learned a lot of great lessons on ISS. We often reference AMS. We did some great EVAs, did some stuff on there that when we launched AMS, never envisioned doing. All right, gentlemen, uh, Luca, if you need it, it's a clocking of six when you get back. That is a big EVA lesson learned out of ISS. So in other words, in the beginning, it doesn't necessarily need to be fully designed to be replaceable, but give us those tools, those interfaces, and with this great team, we'll figure out a way to do that in the future. So I know with the International Space Station, we do have mission control centers all over the world, and we have international partners. So how many countries are we working with with Gateway? Gateway is really building off of International Space Station and that cooperation. So we have on Gateway today is, is NASA, where we're leading that. Our European colleagues are with us, building a couple very important elements uh, for uh, Gateway, both habitation as well as a module that'll provide refueling. On orbit stowage, very important for us. Crew viewing, so they'll be able to, to look out, see the Earth, see the moon. That's where it'll happen on a European module, as well as a comm system that will launch early on uh, Gateway is from our European colleagues. Canadians, big surprise, Canadarm3. So building off of the first Canadarm on the space shuttle, Canadarm2 that's doing so well on ISS today. The third evolution of that on Gateway, Canadarm3, along with all the great external robotic fixtures that'll have our science on it, it'll have ORUs across Gateway. So very similar to ISS, kind of expanding that uh, to Gateway. And then our Japanese colleagues at JAXA, they'll be building uh, the life support system within the European ESA IHAB module And also looking, we're about to launch HTVX uh, next year for ISS, the first one of those. We're looking at that evolution to an HTVXG gateway version 
uh, also as logistics resupply. Like you said, on ISS, we've got control centers around the world. We're going to have centers around the world. We're building hardware around the world today. We're going to operate Gateway a little differently, though. We're not 365, 24-7 with crew on Gateway. Uh, we're doing that with crews that come up on Orion for the landing missions. So we look at about 30 to 60 plus days, depending on a logistics train of crews there. So we'll have uh, centers of those places that I mentioned supporting during the crew time frames. But as during the uncrewed phases, uh, I don't foresee uh, on teams on console around the world, probably more of like an on-call type situation. A lot of stuff can be going on on Gateway, but we won't have the crew there. So that lets us operate in a little different realm. When it's dormant, uh, are we getting any telemetry or, you know, do yeah, we know we'll, how that Yeah, we'll have great capabilities, and, and so we'll flush out exactly what that ops concept is. So early on, right, we launched the first elements called the co-manifested vehicle. Mm -hmm. uh, PP and Halo will launch together. We'll go through a checkout phase. That's a more intense operations team and engineering team as we check it out. Then as it spends about a year getting out using the solar electric propulsion, new technology to get us out there, uh, we'll look at it and do more of a skeleton crew uh, type things. One of the things we're also baking into Gateway early on is our software and software management. We call it the Vehicle Systems Manager. It'll have opportunities in the future to look at autonomy and, and factor autonomy in there. Kind of a crawl, walk, run type scenario. And so you start out with, with small pieces and we look at that to uh, evolutionize in the future so that we can minimize uh, the on-console demand, if you will. I don't know that it'll ever go to zero, but we'll have great systems that'll alert us. We'll have comm coverage with our deep space network. Actually, one of the unique things about Gateway and its orbit, NRHO, we're kind of always looking back at the Earth. And so we'll have those comm opportunities uh, quite frequently. That'll be great, because that's also going to give us a lot of information about how to do this when we go even further, maybe onto Mars, and have mission control support those missions. That's exactly right, and I'm glad you mentioned that. This is kind of our stepping stones for it, right? So we're building it and doing it in a sustained manner for lunar exploration, and so that's what Gateway lets us do. Gateway is that hub. It's kind of that last outpost before you go off on your hike and you come back to and get resupplied. But then we'll also look farther, right? This is moon to Mars. What are we doing on the moon to help us for that Mars exploration? And Gateway is going to be central to that. As we look at ISS today, it's a lot different than when we launch that first element, doing a lot of things on ISS that, that we didn't dream of back then. We keep that in mind with Gateway, recognizing we're going to do uh, lunar surface, but also the expanse uh, to Mars. And so one of the things we talk about is the ability and the, the capability within Gateway for a Mars transit hab. So that would be on the front end of Gateway, kind of get things checked out. You could do a shakedown run, maybe a year long, in a Earth-Moon type orbit, so before you go off to Mars, shake that out, come back to Gateway, and then in the future, go on to Mars. So, so we bake that in from the very beginning, keeping it very open, support our mission, our requirements, objectives today, but open to the future as well. Sounds just as complex as building the International Space Station. Um, is it gonna be bigger or smaller than what we saw in terms of the construction of the ISS? Yeah, it's gonna be quite a bit smaller. And if you think about the role of Gateway, it's an outpost. ISS is, is six, seven crew, 365 days a year. Gateway will have four crew visiting from Orion, at least the initial missions. Two of them will go down to the surface on a, a lander, perhaps all four in the future. And so it's smaller. It's uh, about 30 to 60 days with crew there. If I look at comparisons uh, from a pressurized volume, what I like to say is, is ISS, it's about a four, maybe five bedroom, nice size, very comfortable house. Uh, you look at Gateway, it's probably more of your studio apartment size in terms of volume. But our overall mission is different, right? Gateway is supporting that full mission of the lunar surface. We have crews go down there. So we keep all those things in mind as we build the, the complex. That's fantastic. Sean Fuller, the International Partner Manager for the Gateway Program. Thanks again for joining us today. You bet. My pleasure. Es un momento realmente emocionante aquí en la NASA con la Estación Espacial Internacional que continúa creciendo y ampliando nuestro conocimiento sobre la vida y el trabajo en el espacio. Y ahora con Gateway, una estación de próxima generación para la órbita lunar en desarrollo. Usaremos lo que aprendamos sobre la Luna y sus alrededores para dar el próximo gran salto enviando a los primeros astronautas a Marte. 
Te invitamos a que nos acompañes mientras damos esos saltos gigantes y los pequeños pasos. Puedes seguirnos en Twitter en arroba NASA Artemis y en arroba NASA-Gateway. Y para obtener más información en español sobre la estación espacial y otras historias, síguenos en la web en ciencia.nasa.gov.